When we started to look into genetically modified foods, we kept coming across a company named Monsanto, who also happens to be the world's largest biotechnology company and the world's largest manufacturer and distributor of genetically modified seeds. Well, we wanted to find out how did this company get involved in the production of seeds. What we found out is that Monsanto actually originated as a chemical company. In fact, they've been responsible for some of the most historically significant chemical products, such as Agent Orange, a chemical used during the Vietnam War as part of the U.S. military's herbicidal warfare program, and DDT, a pesticide banned in the United States because of its link to cancer and threat to birds of prey, namely the bald eagle. They also developed Roundup in 1976, the leading herbicide used domestically in the United States. So how did a chemical company get involved in making food? Well, in 1981, Roundup became Monsanto's most profitable product and continued to grow in sales. And at the same time, biotechnology was set up as Monsanto's main research focus. Like any business, Monsanto's main goal was to maximize profits and annually increase sales. So they found a way to ensure that farmers would only use their products. How did they do this? Well, in 1996, they developed their first genetically engineered Roundup Ready seed, the first herbicide-resistant seed. The catch? These seeds are only resistant to Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. In fact, this guaranteed that any farmer planting Roundup Ready seeds would by default have to use Monsanto's herbicide Roundup as well. You're probably thinking, who cares? This doesn't affect me because I don't eat corn on the cob or soybeans all the time. Well, actually, corn and soy are two of the most basic ingredients in almost all processed foods in America. They come in the form of corn syrup, soy lecithin, fructose, lactic acid, dextrose, maltodextrin, cornmeal, soy flour, soy protein, textured vegetable protein, and of course soy or corn oil, which is used in tons of food products. But what about the farmers that don't use genetically engineered seeds? We found that the number of farmers that don't use genetically engineered seeds is diminishing. One of the most controversial issues surrounding Monsanto is the legal action that they take against small farms. Small farms that grow crops in the vicinity of genetically engineered fields become contaminated, mostly due to pollination from the genetically engineered fields. Because of this contamination, and because every genetically engineered seed is patented, Monsanto can then go over to the small farms and force the destruction of all of their seeds, past and present, in some cases destroying the livelihood of farmers. In fact, there are many cases pending against small farmers, and Monsanto has a budget of $10 million a year devoted to prosecuting them. Talk about harvesting fear. Well, through our research, we found many studies from all over the world that talked about the effects of genetically modified foods. But where are the American studies? Through our investigation, we found that there have been very few independent scientific studies done because of limited funding. We also discovered that Monsanto conducts their own scientific studies and submits them to regulatory agencies. Many people believe that there's a conflict of interest when the studies done about genetically modified foods were conducted by the companies that make them. Maybe this is because there have been cases where labs hired by Monsanto have been charged with, quote, falsifying laboratory notebook entries, and manually manipulating scientific equipment to produce false reports. Look, we don't want to point fingers at anyone here. And we're not trying to say that biotechnology can't be used for good or to solve problems. What we're pointing out is that everyone has made errors in judgment in the past. But right now at this moment, that can change. They can change. But how are they going to know unless we tell them? or unless we choose not to support their products. We need to have the option to know what we're eating and be conscious of our own decisions. It's as simple as that.